I'm Alex. I'm James. And I'm Dan. We're the Ragamuffins. And this is our preview of 2000 Trees Festival 2024. <laughs> so 2000 Trees is like our spiritual home. This will be our third year of going together. It's Wednesday 10th to Saturday 13th of July. Next week, we're excited about it. As always, a wonderful place to go to. And we're going to run through some of the bands that we're most looking forward to seeing. Um, we're going to be down at the early day on the Wednesday. Yes. So, as, wanna... as mentioned before, like it's mm. one of the best early entry days you can go for. The, the oh, vibe definitely. in the forest is fucking immaculate. What are you thinking? And one of the best things about the Wednesday as well is there's going to be all these great bands on and none of them clash. we just got to talk about the big name first. Boston Manor. Right. Excited. Headline in the forest. Mm-hmm. Um, first of two sets. Yeah. I mean, shameless self-plug, but if you don't know what the forest at 2000 Trees is like, There'll be a vlog in one of these corners for you to go and watch. The Forest is, I think, maybe the most unique thing any UK festival might have to offer. Yeah. Um, of this size, anyway. Of this size. I mean, you've yeah. got stuff like Glastonbury and Boomtown. But the the exciting thing about Boston Manor set is it's going to be throwback, they've said. They've teased it, yeah. Two, two it. different sets, at least. Not spe- they haven't. I don't think they've specified whether one's going to be a throwback, one's going to be normal. But I imagine... I think they might have done. I imagine this is... Maybe they have. Maybe I've missed it. But I imagine this will be the one where they play some oldies. But like Holding Absence last year. Definitely. Yes. If it's your first time going on the early entry in particular, um, I guarantee, like you could probably see in our vlog from 22, when me and Alex first went in there, just kind of the surprise, the kind of specialness of it will just capture you immediately. Um, and skip ahead to the end of the night, you get to have a silent disco in there as well, which is really fucking sick. Which I think but, is DJed by Cody Frost that night. Oh, interesting. Oh, nice. Okay, that could be quite cool. Well, that ties in very well to a set that I'm very excited for. I've not had a chance to see Cody Frost, despite them being at, I think, quite a considerable number of festivals that I've been to. Um, so I feel like this is a really good chance for me to actually like dedicate that time to, to go and see that set. I think I'm quite looking forward to after seeing this the first time at download is phrase mode. Hell yeah. um, kind of just going through 10 to 10 as you do at some festivals and just kind of finding artists. I was really kind of taken in by it, giving me some like different new metal vibes, similar to kind of like Black Gold, like we mentioned, our download recap. Um, and I'm really intrigued to actually go see it again. And I think in that forest scenario could be something really fucking I'll cool. I'll stop you there. I think they're on the word stage, which is, oh. which is tiny. Oh, wow. shit. Okay. That's very cool. I think looking at this Wednesday, the excerpts are something I'm very excited about. Definitely. Um, I mean, they're like, I've, I've always used this term, trees bands. They're about as trees as it comes. Um, I saw them my first ever time at trees. Uh, they, were, they were the first band that I saw uh, at my first ever time at trees. And I immediately knew in that set that like, not to sound cheesy, but like, this is home. Like, I, I, no, this, I this is like my place and these these are my people. So seeing the excerpts of trees is always a, a lovely experience. I'm and it's going to be in the forest this time. Nice. Cool. I mean, a band that we saw there last year, the 900, get that Tony Hawk Pro Skater vibes going straight away. A lot of fun, a lot of nostalgia. Always an enjoyable set that seems to pop mm. off, which which is fun. Um, but we have some other friends that are there, which are Dream State. Um, we've featured oh, yeah. one before. We've got the perfect gig with Jesse, which you can go and check out. Um, and I'm really looking forward to that, actually, in the forest. I think that's going to be really fucking sick. Yeah, I mean, they smashed it at Download Festival a couple of weeks ago, um, and I'm sure they'll smash it again at Trees. And uh, Another band here that always put on an, an amazing live show is Lamborghini Girls. Like, they spend as much time in the crowd and on the crowd as they do on the stage. So if that doesn't sell it to you, then I don't know what will. I think the thing that's most exciting about this is, like, if you've never been to Trees before, the early entry vibe is completely different from Download, where... You're kind of just, you're limited to the campsite and the village. And there's some stuff on, but there's not loads to do. The thing about trees is it's so small and so easy treesy that you'll be set up so so early in the day that you'll have the time to go and see these bands. So there are bands here that I've not seen before, not even really heard much about. Um, but it's exciting to know that straight away, like, as soon as that tent's up, we'll be able to go and watch some bands. Well, even if you're like halfway through putting your tent up, you can go and see a band and then just come back and like do a bit more. Yeah. Or like stick your tent up, go and see a band, come back, put your gazebo up, go and see a band, go and do another trip to the car, go and see a band. And that's one of the best selling points with trees is that 
although being a great medium sized festival, the location in terms of just ease of getting from place to place is perfect. And like you could have a five minute walk from getting to your tent, as you found out when you woke up very late for Witch Fever Witch once, Fever, yeah. that they could be on main stage and you can be there in five minutes. And there's not really any of the festivals where you can do that. And it just kind of another thing that makes 2000 Trees special, different, innovative, and such a fun place to be. Shall we move on to Thursday, the first of the proper days? And in my opinion, probably uh, the most stacked day. Talk me through it, Dan. There's a lot going on here. Well, for starters, uh, I've got a difficult clash to to see too. Um, Hot Mulligan are a band that I know and love and have seen a few times before. Los Campesinos directly clash with them and they're playing the forest stage. So, Again, those vibes. Mm, they're a band that I'm starting to get into. Their, their upcoming album, um, I'm lucky to have already heard and it's going to be one of the albums of the year, I think. Um, at least with myself. So yeah, very, very difficult choice to make. I'm leaning towards Hot Mulligan at the moment, but I think it's going to depend on the vibes on the day. I think for me, straight away, um, it's Better Lovers. It's probably the set that I'm most excited for this yeah. day. A band that have been pretty much just infectious since they've burst onto the scene. Mm -hmm. And they've played a couple of shows in the UK, but not loads. So we haven't had much of a chance to see them yet. And uh, they, I think they're just going to fit the vibe of Trees perfectly. I think it's going to be absolute chaos. Oh, I can't wait. No, I, mean, I agree. I think that has probably one of my favourite sets I'm most looking forward to over the whole weekend in general. Um, I, you can already tell being Greg from Dillinger, it's going to be fucking chaotic as hell. Um, I absolutely love that God Made Me, as an, God Made Me an Animal EP. I think that was phenomenal. Um, and it's just such an energetic feel to it. Yeah, carnage, chaos, and I'm, I'm fucking there for it. I think when that EP dropped as well, when we reviewed it, we were talking about like where would they fit in mm. terms of like playing UK shows. And I think Trees was like our number one choice of, Definite. yeah, they'd be a perfect fit Definite for Trees. Trees vibes. And here they are. Manifesting. Book us. Let us let's book some bands for Trees, I reckon. We could do a good job. Yeah, I reckon so. The Ragamuffin stage. Yes. Make it happen. I've got another clash this day. Oh God, what's your other clash? It's... Uh, one of the best uh, emo bands around, Movements, versus one of the best emo pop punk bands of the 2010s in Kids in Glass Houses. Tough. Which, uh, which is another tough one. That is tough. Give me, give me a selling points for each of them. Kids in Glass Houses will be just a fun, silly nostalgia fest. Movements will be uh, a finger pointy, sing along, moshy fun time it depends on the vibe you want so it depends which of those things i'd prefer at the time or because of trees being the way it is i could go and see a couple of kids in glass houses songs and then i could go and see a couple of movement songs and then i could go back to kids in glass houses exactly. if I fancy it. easy easy work i mean we mentioned earlier boston manor um to see them kind of in a good high point on here in particular as well I, i'll be there for that second set they're on the main stage that day no they're on the axiom the axiom so yeah, I think that, that Boston Manor set, seeing both of them essentially on back-to-back -back days, I think will be a lot of fun to go I'm, and have. I'm surprised they're playing in a tent. I think that's going to be busy. Yes, I think that's going to pack out, to be honest. They played main stage the year before last. Yeah. And it was it, it felt fucking full. busy there, yeah. yeah. So that's going to be pretty rowdy, I think. Uh, I'm looking forward to Caskets. Seeing them at Download Festival last year in a tent, it was a bit poor with the sound. Uh, however, seeing them like about two months ago at Slam Dunk Festival, uh, the sound was perfect and amazing and kind of the experience I wanted out of it. Um, kind of great songs, great vibes, very holding absence scene with some regard to it. Um, kind of found myself going back and listening to it a little bit more as well. So that's definitely a set on that Thursday that I really want to kind of make my time for. Another extremely treasy band on here is Spanish Love Songs. It's about time they came back to this festival um, and it'll be my first time seeing them there. Very exciting. As I think... There's always a different like atmosphere as well, and comparing seeing a band at a different festival or a different show to seeing them at Trees, like the kind of crowds and the atmosphere that Trees attracts, just makes seeing a band like Spanish Love Songs there just that extra bit special, and I think that's going to be a special set. And they're doing a uh, an acoustic set on the Forest as well, I think as Ooh. well. 
Cheeky. Anyone else you're looking forward to on there? Very excited for Static Dress. Um, I felt feels like there was a point in time where we couldn't avoid them. <laughs> they were everywhere. They were everywhere. And, I, uh, I feel like we've had a nice break had from a nice them now. Break and I kind They've of been around them. in the US yeah. and Europe. I, I miss seeing them now, so I'm very excited for that. And again, like you said, something about a band being at Trees it sort of brings out a different type of energy that I don't think a, a club show or any other festival can really give you. So I think Static Dress at Trees might be, could be historic. Ooh. Predictions. Predictions. I, I've recently become, and I've mentioned it before, a very big fan of Snakes. And I believe they're playing on the main stage. So that's going to be very exciting for them and very exciting for us. Definitely. Because I think they're very cool. Uh, a couple of shout outs for the, the smaller bands that don't have logos. Uh, Knife Bride are great. Mimi Barks is great. Uh, no Bro are pretty cool. Meryl Streak is, is an interesting one, kind of Irish post punk. So I'm interested to see how that goes down. Okay. Oh, and Overpower's really cool. And that's your Thursday. Well, we haven't talked about the headliners yet. Oh, shit, yeah. Well, we've just looked at the stage times, and unfortunately, Better Lovers and the Gaslight Anthem do clash. So, sucks to suck. I'm I'm not too worried, to be fair. I'm not not a big Gaslight Anthem fan. I really know a couple of songs. But Manchester Orchestra, Manchester Orchestra, I must see. Are a band that you recommended a few months ago on the podcast, and... I'm hooked. I'm hooked and I'm very excited to see what that's going to be like live. I feel like it's a little bit of a different vibe to what you n- would expect from Trees. Maybe they'd be more at home. I, I, th- like, I think they're still a very know. Treesy band. They haven't got like a kick to them. They're not yeah. he- They're not heavy in the slightest, but... but it'll be nice. Yeah. I mean, they they had um, American football there last year. I think Manchester Orchestra are kind of... Similar vibe to an extent. Yeah. And uh, it's 10 years of their album Cope this year, so I expect to hear a few songs from that one. Should we move on to the Friday? Let's move on to Friday. So it's day two. I kind of want to keep trying to give Empire State Bastard a chance in a way. I but I've, I'm finding I it will. a bit difficult. Um, like it feels mm. like there's parts of it which like you look at just maybe the lineup or something and you think, yeah, this could be a bit of me. But it's just something that I'm just not, I'm really not clicking with. But if if it's free and I, I kind of have the chance to, I might go and make the effort again. Um, I mean, it might be different with them. I believe headlining a tent this year. Mm, yeah, so it might be a might be a better atmosphere. People have had a, a year now to like sit on the album as well. One of the most important sets of the Friday is the final Palm Reader mm, show. Of course, yeah. I think that is going to be one to get down early for because I think it's mm. going to be quite emotional actually. I'm very it's, excited. It's going to be a lot like that Preston Miko show last set last year, I think. Yeah. Because that was their last ever show, and this is going to be a similar emotional vibe, I think. And they may have even been the first band that we saw in Trees in 22. They were. Mm. When we yes. got into the forest on that early day. Wow. First ever band we saw at Trees. So they're, they're your excerpts? Yeah. <sighs> yeah, definitely, yeah. So I think that'd be a lot of fun. Like, I've seen them a few watch. times now. Really, really enjoyable live band. So, yeah. Yeah. Definitely making our way over for that, for sure. Let's talk about this. Uh, I would say the headlining pair, and I don't know why Bob Villain's build right next to the chats. I think there's some kind of logo dispute going on there, because I don't think Bob Villain are technically a headliner. But the chats, headlining the festival. Interesting one, eh? Maybe we'll have to reconvene afterwards and see how we feel about it, because I like the chats. I do like the chats quite a lot, but a part of me is like hesitant to see how it goes. Why? I just didn't think they were that big, to be honest. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's like our naivety. Maybe they are yeah. massive. Yeah, but, but I didn't manage to catch them when they played a couple of years ago. So I'm excited to see them this time. I would. I don't know. Again, maybe I'm I'm way off here. But I would argue in the UK, maybe Bob Villain are bigger. But maybe that's just because I've got mm. more experience of seeing Bob Villain possibly live and whatnot. So. Either way, it's exciting. We talk all the time about festivals like Download, repeating headliners, and just generally the fact that like the last few years there's been maybe a lack of new headliners. I think Trees have always been quite on I've, the pulse. With I've always said that in. Trees is the hardest UK festival to predict the headliners for because yeah. they just seem to just pick whoever. 
sometimes. You, you could have given me a hundred guesses. They'll pick, they'll pick solid argument. bands, but yeah. it's like, you look at like European festivals and it's like the same headlines at every festival, whereas like none of these bands headlining trees are headlining any other festivals. No. Yeah. A band that we all saw at Download a couple of weeks ago, Mouth Culture. Mm. Yeah. We're have a little yes. revisit mm. there, enjoy that set. Uh, they were really good, kind of first experience yep. seeing them for us. So I think we were making our way for that for sure. Sure. Uh, I'm really excited for Nova Twins, actually. So am I. They're a band that I think are the future. Like, I, I look at bands like Boston Manor. And like, I see, I personally think Boston Manor are like, people say they're like the five-year plan for festivals like Slam Dunk and maybe Trees as well. I think Nova Twins are probably yeah. in that discussion as I well. I think both those bands are kind of on the brink of yeah. doing something um, big. And I've, in a way, I almost feel like being able to see Nova Twins at a festival of this size, a slot that they're in, might be Quite special. almost like a last chance to do so. So I'm very excited for that. I think the same probably applies to Hot Milk. Yeah. They're, they've been playing shows with Foo Fighters over the last couple of years, which is insane. Um, and yeah, seeing them high up on, on the 2000 Trees bill. Won't be long till they're, they're headlining, I don't think. And I still remember seeing them as our first band out of the pandemic when we went to the Heavy Music Awards and we walked in there and they were playing. A lot of first bands on the circle today, isn't it? Yeah. The universe is talking to us. I'm 2000 Trees. Very excited for Turnover. Now, do I love the new direction they've gone in recently? It's not for me. However, I think this set will be brilliant. I feel like they might just match the vibe of trees and they might maybe bust out some maybe not some super oldies but i think we might have a peripheral vision heavy set yeah it's gotta be um but we can only hope at least but i've seen them once before very high energy even the new stuff that seems like it wouldn't be kind of goes off live so that'll be brilliant a band that i think we saw last year making their trees debut after breaking up you previously mentioned presto miko and people are on there as well yes this is another band that are going to do big, big things. Mm. So it's another another case of, like, I was there. Yeah. Like, we'll, in a few years' time, we'll be saying, I was there when they played whatever small slot on a stage yeah. they're playing yeah. at Trees. I think even when they were Presto Mico, they were, like, writing huge-sounding songs. But that EP from Unpeople is, like, effortlessly massive. Mm -hmm. It sounds like it should be in stadiums already. And also, it's going to be exciting to actually know some songs this time around because last year it was just sort of their debut people were there for just the vibes really but now that we've got the ep under our belts we can all go and shout along proudly and proudly. if you fancy something a bit more chilled out uh i'd recommend uh katie malco uh she's basically like a, a singer songwriter kind of vibe um sort of comparable she's kind of the the midlands equivalent of phoebe bridges i'd say She's got some great stage banter as well. So if you just fancy a chill in the forest, K2 Malco is the set you want to go to. Right, on to the last day then. The last um, day. Huge again. Go for it. Go on. I, we'll start with Don Broco, I think. Um, if I, I'll be honest. When I first saw the headliner announcements for this festival, Gaslight Anthem, I felt unsure about the chats I've spoken about, you know, not being certain of their size. Don Broco, however is how you wrap up this weekend. I mean, what a band. What a pick for this festival. We saw them it's, it's just right, Dunk. I think, for yeah. Trees. Yeah. Um, yeah, their Slam Dunk headliner a few years ago was brilliant. I think we don't didn't have the new album at the time. Maybe? I think we, we had a few singles had from it, Had a few it, singles, but not the full thing. And, and this seems to be, uh, they're sort of talking about this show as if it's going to be their last one for a while until they go away and write an album, write and record a new album. Should be a big one then. Yeah. So I'm very excited for that. Equally excited for Creeper. Um, saw them download. Saw them download. download. That, was, that was very good. The mud, you know, I was pretty far back. Didn't really feel like walking all the way down there. We were also robbed of seeing them at Takedown. Um, but Redemption, we get to see them at Trees and they're going to be fucking sick. Yeah, boy. I can tell already. I feel like they're just a band that... Um, I feel like there's a lot of dense lore to get into. And I haven't yet done it, so maybe this will inspire me. Seeing the trees will inspire me to properly. There are bands that I've never really like enjoyed, like on record. But whenever I've seen them live, it's been an entertaining show. Mm. So definitely one to see again. And then it's the excerpts again. Love the excerpts. I think they're on the main stage this year. 
which is much deserved. Which is very, very they good. They had a pretty packed tent last mm. year. Yeah, very good. So I'm very, very excited for that. And there's a lot of love for them in that tent as well. So let's get out in the open. I think Lonely the Brave clashed with someone. I need to see who it was. Lonely the Brave and Frank Turner clash, which is an, another tricky one. But I do love Lonely the Brave. There's a I've got a real soft spot for them. So I'll probably see Lonely the Brave because amazing vocalist. Like when a, a band loses a, a really special vocalist and you think, oh, well, they're done then. And then they replace them with someone who maybe sounds even better. And then st- like he starts writing amazing music with them as well. Their new album's great. Um, so yeah, a band to go and check out for sure. One that I remember seeing last year at Burn It Down mm. was Cauldron. Yes. Yeah, um, we... That was chaotic, fun, energetic, kind of hit all your senses at once, to be honest. Yeah. And so like that's one I'm for certain on this Saturday earmarking out to go and see. But their album really went under the radar last year because it was very cool. Uh, Suicide in the City, it's called, if you haven't heard it. Brilliant. Yeah, they're brilliant. Um, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. I'm going to drag you both to a set that you're not going to want to go to. Go on then. What and are we that's going? Sixty-eight. No, because I've heard you guys talk about how bad they were. Yeah, I'm for I'm, years. I'm fine with this, so that you can see them be and, bad. Watch and them I be wanna, great now. I want to. <laughs> I want to get confirmation myself that either you two have a yeah. wrong, have have the memory wrong, or I don't think they the are wrong. just bad. <laughs> they it, might it was, be good. It was a bear tooth show in Birmingham in something like. 2014, 2015, I want to say. I think we were still th- in sick form. Yeah, I think it might have been 2014. Yeah, I think we were still in sick form towards the end of it. Nine years, oh. ten years ago. Look at I us forgot now. what year it was for a second. <laughs> yeah, they, they supported Beartooth and... Um, you didn't enjoy it. No, we didn't. You didn't say good things about it. We didn't. And I've never seen them live. I've just been living with that story. And you know what? This, I think... I, I, haven't I, seen them, think I haven't seen them live since then, so I'm going to give them another chance. Yeah. So are you. Okay. As long as they don't clash with anyone else I yeah, want to see. Of course, yeah. <laughs> what I am excited for, however, though, is Calva Louise. Um, again, they supported Trash Boat along with Strange Bones a few years ago. They were really cool then. Um, some of their, the clips that I see on TikTok, she sounds feral. She sounds Will Bloody Feral. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bad joke. Sh- they sound brilliant. I'm very excited. And I think they're going to they might steal the day. I think a band that you guys have talked about, I've never listened to them, but I just love the name. Michael Sarah Palin. Oh, they're brilliant. I love the name. Yeah, they're very much like that kind of, uh, what do we call it? Loser emo or like lo- loser, loser punk. punk kind of vibe. A bit like Mum Jeans uh, with a bit a bit of added Midwest emo. And so uh, going to be a very good set. I'm also very excited for Teenage Wrist a band I've not yet been able to see live. Really enjoy their music. I, they're one of those bands that creates just like this wall of sound yeah. that just sort of envelops you. So I'm excited to see how that translates live. I think it'll be really good. And also Kid Bookie's there, I've just noticed. I've always kind and of wanted to really check him out. I think that'll be a really fun set. I've been at a few different places we've been to and I think there's been clashes and things like that. So <laughs> that is one I'm kind of intrigued. He came out, he was one of the people when we just did Teenage Dirtbag for about 20 minutes at download at the end of their set. And I'm not even kidding, it As fucking they went on. As they, should. Um, they brought out loads of rappers, kind of joined the bridge part. They just played the bridge and a load of rappers came on and he was one of them. And he was probably the best one out of the three, I think, that came on. And they kind of like rapped over Teenage Dirtbag. So yeah, fuck it, why not? Can I say something absolutely unrelated to this? But it's because we were just talking about Kid Bookie and he's a rapper and it's just triggered a thought in my head. Go. Outbreak headliner next year. Maybe if it's like another early day. Scarlord. Imagine yeah. the full circle of the reactions. That'd around. be pretty pretty sick. 100%. Sort of yeah. Denzel Curry vibes, but a little bit smaller. Mm. Yeah? Sorry. I'm aboard with that. Yeah. Mm. Dan's on board. Outbreak. Do it. Yeah, not Real not to, not to make this a video of us just listing band names, but Thrill Collins are uh, a 2003 staple, and they are very, very fun. There's a band like... Quite a big band that I've n- that I'd literally never heard of before, but all the kind of like emo dad core people have been hyping this band up and are very excited for Death from Above 1979, 
who again I've literally never heard of them. I've still not listened to them, but I feel like I need to listen to them and, and prepare for this festival because it sounds like they might be my kind of thing. So that's 2003, 2024. Um, what band oh, are you? Hang on a minute. Oh, okay. We need to have a look at the Ragamuffin Club. So we've got our little Ragamuffin Club. You can join the link below. Uh, a free little thing on Facebook, just a community to come and join in. We can talk about music together. You can get involved have... with the videos like yeah. this. Yeah, we'll ask you questions. Get to have your thoughts out there. Yeah. What What are the club looking forward to then, Dan? So Bron has recommended that we go and see Buds, uh, Sweet Pill, and Michael Sarah Palin. Consider uh, it done. Buds are actually supporting Michael Sarah Palin at a show in Oxford very oh, soon that we're unfortunately uh, too busy to go to. Uh, Max says we should go and see him in the merch tent. Yeah. Oh, we will. Oh, yeah, we will. Obviously, Max. <laughs> 100%. You're, you're the real headliner, Max. Uh, Ross says, caskets! With an exclamation mark. That's why I Fair enough. exclaimed it. I'm there. I'm there. Uh, Tyler says the chats are a recent find for himself. So he recommends seeing them. Mm-hmm. We'll be seeing them. And Matthew recommends a whole list of bands here. Meryl Streak, Blood Command, Press Club, Blank Atlas, Buds, and Spanish Love Songs. Okay, so that's 2003's. Um, what are your top three bands you're most looking forward to seeing in a couple of weeks? I'm glad you asked, James. <laughs> Uh, I think I'm looking forward to Spanish Love Songs, Manchester Orchestra, and I'm going to say Hot Mulligan, even though I might see Los Campesinos as well. I think I'm most excited for Better Lovers, Movements, and Palm Reader. Um, Better Lovers, Boston Manor, Palm Reader, and then Caskets of Ray Cloth Fourth. Unpeople are at very close, close fourth as well. So yeah, that's our preview of 2003 to 2024. It's only in a couple of weeks away. If you're going, let us know down below who you're most psyched to see. Um, if you see us there, come and say hello. Join the Ragamuffin Club. As mentioned earlier, it's down in the description. We'd love to talk music with you all. And if you want to join us at Trees, there's probably still a chance to get tickets. So we'll put a link in the Go. description below. Great times, great vibes. Um, love going every year. It's a very unique festival. Um, couldn't recommend it enough. Like the video, subscribe, comment, all that shit. We've got festival season. You can go and check out our vlogs from Slam Dunk Festival, from Download. We've got trees coming up. There'll be so much more to come. Um, yeah. See you in the next one. See you soon. Is. Bring me a Taylor Swift themed friendship bracelet and you'll get a free t-shirt.